Okay, it's Sunday afternoon. I'm back to work on the AnyCubic Linear Plus Delta 3D printer again. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get these put together. Uh, you don't have to have these insert nuts. You can use the square nuts that came with the kit. And they work fine, but I, uh, I think I'm going to get a little more precision and it's going to be a little easier to slip this together by using these insert nuts. So, so that's what I'm going to do. Let's get started. I'm actually kind of under time pressure. I kind of want to get this finished so that my students can begin to use it. And so I'm a little more worried about getting the machine done than I am about trying to produce a really good high quality video. But uh, hopefully there's good information that you're getting out of this even though the video is not all that well produced or edited. If I do more of this, uh, I'll, I'll try to get better at video editing, but, but for now, this is what it is. Okay, and putting the um, sliders actually onto the frame, the instructions call for six of these stop blocks. They call this part A08, and they're gonna be installed with um, these M4 by 10 millimeter button head screws. The difference is button head screws kind of have a, a rounded off head and this is a socket head screw and you can see it kind of has a squared off head. So the socket head screws hold in the sliders and these button head screws hold in the stops. Okay I've got the stop locks completed and I'm ready to install the linear slides on the frame here. So I'm ready to put in the last slider. I've got the other two in and just wanted to show again I've got the insert nuts here uh, spread along the slider and I'm just getting those all lined up straight and I'm going to take the stop block here and go ahead and put it on the track and it just slots right in here like this okay so now I've got all three linear slides installed and I just need to adjust them I went ahead and locked this top one down at that 30 millimeters from the top of the extrusion as in indicated in the instructions and now I'm going to just lift this slider up and it it's free to wiggle a little bit right now but that's because this one is one at the other end is turned a little bit sideways. As soon as I snug that up, I just I just barely have to snug these. And I can actually feel it forcing its way to the center as I tighten these down. Okay, I've got the linear slides installed on the main frame, and I just realized that when I was assembling the effector, I missed a step. I need to install the slide mounts at the ends of these tie rods. And I think I was so busy trying to make video that I wasn't paying attention to the instructions or to my notes. So I'm going to go back and do that right now. I'm going to get set up and we'll make that happen. Okay, I'm ready to put these mounting blocks on the linear sliders. Before that, I have to prepare these. These are actually called, they call these the, um, what do they call these? They call these the belt tensioners. Um, and that's what this, this extrusion right in here is for is to tension the timing belt that throws through here. The free end kind of travels through here, then the two loose ends are locked down on this side of the extrusion. First thing you gotta do with these, or at least I think the easiest way to do this, is to put these little stop screws. These are actually gonna be the uh, homing stops, uh, so that when the slider rises all the way to the top of the framework, uh, this will actuate a micro switch and will tell the machine, hey, I'm at the top of the travel. Okay, so anyway, uh, the stop screws are these uh, M2.5 by 12 millimeter screws, and you're gonna need three of those, and they're gonna go into this uh, hole right here. So I set my caliber, calipers to about eight millimeters, and I'm just gonna use the depth gauge here as a kind of a no a go, no-go gauge as I set these up. Um, I've threaded it in by hand, and I'm just taking my two millimeter metric ball driver, and just gonna Turn that in. I'm not having to push very hard at all here. Um, so I got just a little bit further to go. A few more turns. One thing I should mention is I said it it doesn't matter whether these are at eight millimeters or nine millimeters or ten millimeters. What does matter is that they all need to be the same. When you start out, this is your initial level position. And you kind of want everything to come up to be level. It may not be down on the bed. The printhead may not be down on the bed yet but this controls how close you get down to the bed and it also controls the leveling of the print head so even though it doesn't matter how far all these are out in other words this distance here is not critical it is critical that this distance is the same for all three 
All right, just as with the other end, uh, where we have these brass spacers right here, uh, holding the rod end spaced out a little bit away from the effector. When they upsized this machine, they had to add some spacers here to make the spacing a little bit wider so that they could actually cover the entire radius of the print bed. So we're going to go ahead and install these, um, well, they call them the uh, belt tensioners, but we're going to go ahead and install those now. Uh, the Pay attention to where the effector is. So you want to think about how it's going to be on the machine. Uh, this face, the smooth face, is going to be facing toward the sliders. Uh, so you want to be sure you're kind of working. I guess you kind of have to work upside down or else you have to turn the effector over. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you. Well, you're probably not in the frame. Okay. Uh, then these use, these are M3 by 25 millimeter. And they go through the rod end. And then the ferrule goes on this way with the flange end of the ferrule facing toward the slider and this then threads on here. Okay, I got it figured out here and I had to stop and change batteries. I'm definitely learning that uh, my little camera here, and it's just a little one I bought to take snapshots, uh, is really not good for, for making a lot of videos. The way that this works, um, these screws just slide through here, but uh, I had forgotten in the back of each of these there is a slot and this bolt drops into the slot nut rather I'm sorry the nut drops into the slot it's captured by the sides of the slot I don't know if you can see that or not captured by the sides of the slot and then when this goes in it threads into the nut and it captures so that's how that's going to go all right so now that I remember that I'm going to go ahead and put a nut in each of the slots here get these other parts out of the way Remember that the ferrule goes in so that the uh, flange end or the washer end of the ferrule is toward the fitting rather than at the ball end. Um, is that right? Let's look again. I'm looking at the instructions very carefully to make sure that I'm doing this right because I did screw it up on the other machine and had to take it all apart. Uh, yes, so this narrow end of the ferrule or spacer is what they call it goes toward the ball end of the uh, carbon fiber tube or the the ball ball driver ball fitting ball and socket joint whatever it's called and then that slides in here and then i just need to get my ball driver and i can thread that in and i'll just thread that in loosely and do the same thing on the other side again i've already put the nut down into this slot put the ferrule on the end of the bolt so that the narrow end is against the ball joint. And once again, thread that in here and tighten that down. Okay, I've got the uh, effector installed now. Uh, I've put in, attached the uh, belt tensioners to the sliders and I'm double checking to make sure that everything is free to move around. You wanna grab that effector and lift it up to the top of its travel, swing it around in every direction. Uh, look for places where it might catch or bind. Um, the software limits how far it can travel, so uh, the, the tubes are going to do things like crash into the belt tensioners, but uh, that's, that's uh, limited by the software there. All right, so that concludes installing the effector. Um, this has been an interesting series of videos. I've learned a whole lot about making video. Uh, I've learned that my camera has some severe limitations. Ah, not enough that I'm ready to go out and buy a new camera right away. Uh, my, my wife has a digital SLR. I may borrow hers to see how that goes. I definitely would like to have some kind of a video camera that had a forward-facing screen. And the other thing that would probably be really useful is to have some sort of a remote control. But my little Canon SureShot camera, it's not doing too bad for, for this. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with the way it records the audio. Uh, it's also picking up a lot of the background noise. You can hear the other 3D printer running in the background, and you can also hear the dryer, which is inside the house. I'm out in the garage. All right, thank you for watching this set of videos, um, and I'm going to go ahead and edit these and put those up on put those up on YouTube. I guess it's all going to be just one video, and I will be back to install the top frames and the limit switches and the belts and then begin to put in the electronics uh, so probably about four more videos before we get this done 
Uh, thanks for watching, and if this has been useful to you, you know, let me know down in the comments. And and if this has been horrible for you, and you wish I had never put these videos up, that's well, okay. You can tell me that too. I'm not going to hurt my feelings. Um, but any constructive comments that you want to make about how to make these better or how to make them more useful, be happy to hear that. Bye bye.